I'm just going to steal the, um, the ingredients of it. The particular question actually asks you just to find a gradient. Really, really simple. But I'm going to go a step further because it's not that much of a leap. To find the equation of the tangent to this curve at this point, or at this x value, I should say. Okay? So what I'm trying to find is, what's the equation of the tangent? It would be just as equal to find the equation of the normal. What would I do that's different? What's the difference between the tangent and the normal? Oh, gradient. The gradient. Yeah, the gradients. What about the gradients? They multiply together. Yeah, so once I find the gradient, if I just leave it as is, I'll get the tangent's gradient. Uh, I should say the derivative. If I'm the normal, I want the negative reciprocal. So that's all that would change. The process would be identical otherwise. So let's give this a go. I have a graph. I've got an x-coordinate. If I want a tangent, you don't need to write this part down, but where I'm heading is this. Okay, that's where I'm headed to. Okay, I want a point and I want a gradient. That's what I need. I'm going to start with the easy thing first. I've been supplied with x1. I can calculate y1 just by popping it right into this equation. No fancy calculus required. So that'll give me the coordinates. In this case, what am I actually getting? Can anyone, how good are you with your radians? Can you read this off here? I'll do the substitution for you so you can see. This is um, sine of 2 pi on 3 on 2, which is pi on 3. You might at this stage still need to recalibrate and say, wait, how many degrees is that? It's 2 pi on 3 on 2. 2 pi on 3 on 2. Is pi on 3? It is, right? Yeah. What have I done? Where's x? It's x is on the numerator, right? Three times four. Do you want me to do an extra step? Oh, okay. I'll write it. I'll write it anyway, just for my own sake. There's the x, and there's the odd two. Yep. So, this is pi on three. You might need to think, okay, that's 60 degrees. Sine of 60 degrees. Root three on two, right? Root three on two. There's my y coordinate. That's easy. I've got my x1, I've got my y1. Now I've got to get to my gradient. Okay? So dy on dx, this is about as simple as it gets without just giving the results that need to be quoted. You've got chain rule happening in here, so I need the derivative of the inside function. What's the derivative of the inside? Oh, huh. It's a half. I've done the inside, now I'll do the outside. Sine turns into cosine, right? So I'm going to go cos of x on 2. Okay. There's the gradient function not to be confused with the gradient. Right? The gradient is at a particular point. You can't, for example, and this is a common error, you wouldn't believe how common this error is. A lot of people say at this point, cool, I've got everything I need, this is y minus root 3 on 2, and then they put this here. Yeah, yeah, people do this. Now, what, what's going wrong? What's going wrong? We are misunderstanding the difference between gradient, and that's a number, versus a gradient function, right? You're putting values into it. I need to actually supply in that, okay? Um, this doesn't make sense. You can't even actually do your substitution now because I've got two x's flying around. What on earth is this? It's not a straight line, okay? So don't do it like that. Evaluate the gradient first. So, <coughs> I'm now going to state my gradient. Therefore, m is equal to, and I distinguish between these two, I say dy on dx, there's my function, and then I say m, that's a number, I'm putting that into something. Right? So a half cos of, and again, it's still x on 2, so it's still pi on 3. You may still need to recalibrate. Cos of how many degrees again? 60 degrees, cos 60 is a half, so a half times a half gives you a quarter. You okay with that? I've got all my pieces now. That's it. So all I need to say is, okay, um, y minus y1 there is, equals m outside of x minus whoops, 2 pi on 3. You okay with that? Now, <laughs> this is going to happen again and again. Because we're dealing with trig functions, and we actually want exact values, you're going to get two nasty things happening again and again. Namely, pi is going to be in there, and thirds are going to be in there. And there's, there's not really much you can do to avoid that. Uh, I mean, if you want, we can get rid of the fractions. What would I have to multiply through by? 
I don't think four would do it. I'd have to go twelve, wouldn't I? Uh, if I wanted it in general form, uh, because that and that are going to give me twelve. Why don't we just do it for the sake of it? Because general form is the most. If they require a form, general form is probably the most common. So let's multiply through. That gives me this. I tend to do X as positive. There you go. All of the least sociable characters in mathematics all ball together in a single equation. Um, that's my AX plus BY plus C. I'm done. That's it. There's your equation. Okay. Um, now, a common, just as a follow-up, just since it's there, I'm going to mention this. Let's draw this. Can we draw this briefly? Let's have a look. What is this thing going to look like? We know what sine x on 2 is. How does it differ? How would you describe its verbally, uh, its difference from sine x? The period is... It becomes wider. So the way I like to think about it is if you just have a regular sine x, right, you will get exactly one copy of the curve from 0 to 2 pi. Up and down. Okay. If you do this, you are going to get not one copy, but half a copy from 0 to 2 pi. Of course, if I went the other way, this is twice as frequent. So from 0 to 2 pi, you get 1, 2, right? So I always read that number. I read that as my frequency, and that helps me remember, wait, is it, is it squashed? Is it stretched? This is stretched. Okay? So I've got uh, 0 to 2 pi. <laughs> that's a boring graph, but that's okay, right? Where's two pound break? It's two thirds of the way. It's two thirds of the way to the stationary point. Do you agree with that? Because there's pi. There's my stationary point. So if I go one, two, there you go, right there. Okay. So if I were to draw this tangent line, I'm expecting that. Okay. Now we're not quite there yet because we haven't dealt with integration yet. But a very common question would be, okay, hence determine the area. Here. That's a very, very common question, and it's not hard to get. You can see what I would have to do. You could do it as a subtraction of areas. You work out this one, you work out that one, and then off you go. Okay? But these are the kinds of places where it's going. Um, this, is, this is just the warm-up, and it's like, well, what can you do with this? 